First of all, to put these devices to the test, we have a trick question to do with spelling. So could you please tell us what is the correct spelling of the Icelandic volcano that we have all bravely fought through to get here today? I actually know the answer to this. I read it in Wikipedia this morning. Well, then it must be right. We're counting down now. Stop. Okay, Ooh. who got it right? Lots of people. 63%. And 23% don't care <laughs> because they've beaten it. Well, thank you very much. Now you've had your practice run, we've got a serious question for you. Which of the following technologies will have the biggest impact on the future of communication? Would you vote now? Stop. Okay, well, by a short head, social media, they were in the right place to be talking about that, Mobile, 34%. Looks as if video has pretty much had it, 7%. And behavioral targeting, 8 Data exchange is 8 And broadband, well, that's the end of broadband, 4%. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you make of those? Uh, that's very interesting. I think I would have answered slightly differently. Um, but it's a, it's a very broad question. So I think that the way I would answer the question is to break it down by sector, uh, break it down by region. So I would, I would have said, I would have made the argument that it's broadband uh, that's going to have the biggest impact, but it's broadband in the developing world. Yeah. Um, the reason probably most people didn't pick broadband is we've all got broadband. So we take it for granted. It's taken for granted. What we, what we don't yet realize or recognize is what's going to happen uh, with our communication, with our culture, um, as the next billion people come online. Uh, so Africa. Africa, India, China. Um, and we're going to hear from them a lot more, and we're going to hear from people we never heard from before. Uh, I think, you know, both with, with music, video, um, written word, uh, it's going to have a huge impact. Um, Will it always be a force for good? No, not always. Uh, but that's such as the nature of communication uh, in general. Uh, I think that um, there is no question that we will see um, both uh, some fabulous, uh, wonderful, amazing uh, revolutions where uh, uh, tyrants are overthrown uh, through peaceful demonstrations organized spontaneously on Twitter. That's going to happen. It's already happened to some extent in some places. Um, we're also going to see... Uh, some riots to start through misinformation that mm. comes over Twitter um, and some uh, panics caused because people didn't pause to stop to find out if it's true or not. Uh, so any kind of communication obviously is going to have uh, all kinds of different impacts. Yes, I suppose if everybody can turn up at a certain place to, to dance on a station platform or whatever, they could equally turn up. Yeah, and, and we've seen some very strange things uh, in China actually so far of... Uh, uh, message boards, very large popular message boards, deciding that some person had done some wrong, and then literally thousands of people harass that person. Um, it's really quite unpleasant. Um, very frightening. Right. Could we have some questions from the audience, please? Down here, thank you. Do we have some microphones about the place? Yep. Yes. Coming. No. Try, try using your your pad. There's a microphone function on there. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hello. Yes. That's better. So, I'm a big fan of Wikipedia um, user and have edited here and there. Um, and my question, and I saw your vision, which I thought was really inspiring. And my question is why? Um, well, I mean, that's a big question. Um, 
I think uh, for most of us, when we first uh, saw the internet and we first really understood what it was about, one of the first things you think of is, wow, this is really great. People all over the world can come together and share information and share their knowledge. Uh, and then we went through an era when the internet seemed to be mostly about pop-up ads and spam and uh, a little bit of nonsense here and there. And I thought, you know, this whole sharing knowledge thing sounds like a good idea. Why don't we share knowledge? Uh, so, I mean, that's the most fundamental reason why. Um, I think that um, when I think in the, in the bigger picture about what I think our possible importance is in the world, um, one of the things that drives uh, war in the world is a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding. The number of books translated, uh, and this, num this statistic is from a few years ago. I don't think it's materially changed, although I've heard it's gotten a little bit better. The number of books translated into Arabic every year is about the same as the number of books translated into German every day. So there are parts of the world, the Arabic world is, is one part, but even the Arabic world is doing much better than a lot of places in the world, where the kind of access to information that we all take for granted is just not there. Um, we all take it for granted that the major influential books of the day are available in our languages, um, and, and this is quite normal. There are people who have no access to that kind of knowledge, and I think the internet is gonna really change that, and I think it's really important that we have a uh, humanitarian approach to say, look, let's be neutral, uh, let's try to get as much information as we can into the hands of people so they can make better decisions in their lives, which I think is going to make our lives better as well. Thank you. Another question just here. Thank you. Could you say, who, the microphone is coming. It's so coming. if you could tell us who you are, that would help. Hi, I am a reporter from Exchange for Media in India. Uh, the question emanates from the fact that you mentioned Wikipedia's next area of focus is going to be markets like India. Uh, I wanted to understand that, you know, there has been a lot of debate whether digital India is strong, whether internet penetration is good enough, whether people really understand these technologies, so on and so forth. So what is your take on that? And second, what are you doing in terms of efforts uh, to grow in these markets, like you said you are? Right. So uh, I'll speak specifically about the Indian market. So uh, in India, we, we're very popular. I think we're the ninth most popular website, something like this. Um, and a significant portion of our traffic from India, of course, is in English. Uh, the vast majority of people who, are, who have computers are English speakers and can function in English. Um, however, we also have uh, many uh, projects in the Indian languages. Uh, from, uh, you know, Bengali's pretty big, Hindi is big. Um, we, you know, it's a whole, a whole group of languages there with a really passionate communities who are, are avidly working on those things. So what are some of the challenges uh, for us in India? Um, many people in India have keyboard entry problems. Those have gotten better over time. The ability to write on an English keyboard in Hindi, it's not easy. Uh, and a lot of people in the past didn't even know how to do it. And so now that's beginning to change. Um, and so one of the things that we're looking at is usability, just simple usability. When people come to Wikipedia uh, in, in various languages, do they have the software they need? How can we help them get the software they need in order to be able to edit uh, in a comfortable way? What can we change about the website? So we're starting to put some resources towards that. Um, we just got our first board member from India. So uh, uh, Bishaka Dada is a filmmaker from uh, Delhi. Uh, and she's just joined the board. Um, we're hoping that she'll give us more. I mean, it's been pretty pathetic, actually, that of our board members, I'm like the India expert, because I've been there eight times, right? Frankly, you can go to India a lot more than eight times and still not understand India. It's quite a complex place. Um, and so we're trying to gain some expertise in that area. And in India, in particular, it's one of the places we are uh, going to have a pilot project in the next year uh, to have actual people on the ground. And so I think a, a large part of the focus of people on the ground in India is going to be uh, software usability, but the other part is simply uh, PR, uh, simply communications, making sure that, um, that the Indian press is aware that we have a local group and that they can talk to the, the local group, and not just the English language newspapers, but all the languages uh, that they can write about Wikipedia in their language and that it exists in their language. Because generally when people find out, uh, you know, it's surprising how many people, you know, they, they're, they're using the English Wikipedia all the time, and they have no idea that we have Tamil Wikipedia. They just don't know it uh, until somebody tells them, and they're very excited. They go, oh, wow, check this out. This is amazing. 
Uh, so it's, a lot of it's about communication. So I, I go to India as often as I can uh, simply because, I, well, I'm completely useless, but it gets in the newspaper when I go to India. So I have to go there and, and try to help get press coverage. Thank you, Jimmy. We've got some questions coming in by text. And the message behind a few of them seems to be, how sanguine are you about the fact that that what we're getting on Wikipedia is opinion rather than information sometimes? Um, so I, I think that we are surprisingly good uh, in this regard. And, and the way that we ensure the accuracy of the information, uh, it, it's a complicated social system. But we have a core community of a few thousand really active users. <clears throat> uh, a large number of them are administrators. Administrators have the ability to lock pages. They have the ability to block people from editing if they're misbehaving. And we have a huge set of policies. I mean, you can spend your life reading the policies in Wikipedia uh, relating to uh, references, relating to neutrality. Um, and a lot of it's just very old-fashioned. Uh, you know, the, the idea is uh, you can't just come... If you just come to Wikipedia and you just start writing your random opinions, the community will delete it almost instantly. They, just, they find that to be completely idiotic. They'll say, where's the source? Where's the reference? Oh, what is your source? Um, we care about quality sourcing. So, for example... Um, we're very suspicious about blogs as sources. That doesn't say we will never use a blog as a source, but I think our standards about when to use a blog as a source are not really materially different from, say, the BBC or yeah. the New York Times. We just treat it with a great deal of caution. Um, you know, if you have a famous politician who's blogging about their own position, that's a pretty good source. <laughs> if you have a random blogger opining about something, um, mm, well, where did they get their information and things like that. So. Um, that's, you know, that's the core of it, is, is having a really passionate community um, who cares about quality. Thank you. I can take one more question from the audience there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy, um, I was obviously, you know, excited that you're here today. It's Terry Allen from uh, uh, Friedman International, head of digital. Um, I was particularly impressed, <laughs> I must say, when I was at breakfast uh, 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 this morning in the hotel, over the page, page two, FT, and there's your name in a little, uh, <laughs> a little uh, edit there of uh, how you arrived here. Um, speed to market, um, in terms of getting information to market for brands, in particular, say, for example, for Wikipedia. Maybe you could explain a little bit how you address that issue, because when you're dealing with information that's sometimes quite sensitive, speed to market is crucial, but you do have to, at the same time, um, you know, care about that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to interpret your question because I'm not exactly sure what you're asking, but um, because all of the info, everything in Wikipedia is written by the community. So we only have 35 people on staff. None of those people is tasked with editorial oversight of what's going on on the website. Their, their job is to keep the, keep the lights on, keep the servers running, uh, improve the software and things like that. So... In, in terms of how fast things make it into Wikipedia, um, it's just as fast as people uh, put it in, which is virtually instantaneous. So uh, just to give an example, it's almost impossible to turn on the radio and hear that some uh, famous person has died uh, and then go to Wikipedia and find that it hasn't been updated yet. Um, basically, as soon as anything happens, people are updating it very, very, very quickly. Um, again, though, the most important thing for Wikipedia is that we do not allow original research. Wikipedia is not the place for people to do breaking news. It's not the place to make an announcement. Because um, so, you mentioned for brands, for example. Um, it's, it just, that's just the wrong place for it. Instead, what we rely on is uh, you know, original reporting from traditional news agencies, from uh, you know, if a company makes a, a, an announcement, something like that. Once that happens, then someone may put it into Wikipedia. But it's, again, it's all about the references. Because if we didn't have that rule, people could make up stuff all the time and just put whatever they want in willy-nilly, which sometimes they do, but they get blocked very quickly if they try that. I hope that answered the question. That's it. OK, right, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Jimmy. And on behalf of you all, I'd like to thank Jimmy Wales for, first of all, making the pilgrimage to get here and, yeah, and then talking so animatedly to us. It's been great. Thanks. I hope you'll stay around for the rest of the yes, session. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Very good. Thanks.